So the frontispiece codex of Mendoza is a piece of art that kind of shifts our geographic location uh, quite dramatically. Actually, we were in Europe for a long period of time going kind of back and forth between the north and Italy when we were studying the Renaissance. And now we've sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and we are in the Americas. And so this piece is what's known as a codex. So more of like an ancient manuscript or book. So that should be one of your vocab terms. And the other term, since it's part of the title, is frontispiece, which is an illustration, which you're seeing in this image on the right, facing the title page of a book, uh, and that's what you're seeing on the left. So we are gonna be studying the image that's on the right-hand page in this open book, but I wanted you to see what the book looked like, open and complete. So let's go ahead and start with context. And the book itself, this codex, was created about 20 years after the Spanish conquest of Tenochtitlan, which today is Mexico City. But Tenochtitlan during this time period was the Aztec capital. capital. Uh, I think it meant the, the city of the prickly pear, and that's where the name comes from, Tenochtitlan. And the book itself was commissioned by the Spanish Viceroy. And Viceroy is another vocab term you have. And Viceroy just means basically it's a ruler who is um, the figurehead and authority on behalf of a sovereign or, you know, like a king or a queen. And the Viceroy is usually living in the colony or the conquered territory. Uh, that now the king rules. And so the king in this particular story is Charles V from Spain. And our viceroy, so the person ruling on Charles V's behalf, is named Mendoza. So that will explain the entire name of the art piece now. The frontispiece, you should know, of the Codex Mendoza. So Codex book, Mendoza is our viceroy. And he is here and in Tenochtitlan in this new Spain, because now it has been conquered by the Spanish. So the book was made um, and commissioned by the Viceroy to be sent as a gift to the Spanish king. You know, look at now what you have conquered, look what's happening here. Uh, this is the new land that you and now Spain own. And so it's meant to be a gift to Charles V, but when they sent it over on the Spanish fleet, you know, they were sailing back across the Atlantic to Europe, French pirates stole it. And it eventually makes its way to France, where a man named André Thevet uh, acquired it. And he was like the, um, worked in for the King of France, King Henry. And so his name is actually on the book in about five different places. So if you look at the top of this particular page, this frontispiece page, you see A period survey and like cosmographer, uh, I think his work title. And again, he's working for Henry, uh, the King of France. So the Spanish King never gets this book, which was intended for him. Um, in terms of artists, you'll notice on the ID information, uh, native indigenous artists, you know, the Aztecs actually make the images. And then um, like a Spanish priest or someone would annotate the entire story in Spanish so that the king would have been able to read it. And then it also allows the Spanish to really control the story. So that's um, part of the kind of, um, book that you'll see if you go back to that book, you can see in the front all the text on the left hand side that's in Spanish that would have been written by the Spanish priest. So um, continuing on uh, going on to content, you'll notice that the image itself, you know, the main image is really showing in, in symbolic of Tenochtitlan. 
and Tenochtitlan was divided, you know, the city was divided into four parts. And so this image is divided into, or at least the main part of the image is divided into four parts. And there are like big diagonal rectangles that creating an X that divide it into four quadrants. And those um, diagonal rectangles or lines are blue and they're supposed to represent the canals of the city these waterways that divided the city into four parts. And then there is an eagle in the center of those lines, an eagle standing on top of a cactus that is growing out of a stone. And that image in the center is a reference to the origin myth of the founding of Tenochtitlan, where one of the gods sent out people looking for a new place to have their capital. And he tells these people uh, who are the ancestors of the Aztecs, he tells them, look for you know, a cactus growing out of a rock with an eagle on top. And when you find that symbol, you find those things, that's where you have to settle and form your new city. And so that's what the ancestors did. They looked for that symbol, found it here in the middle kind of a, of a waterway and with the canals and almost like an island in the middle of these canals. And they founded Titnachtitlan. So that's that symbol in the center. And that's what the blue lines you know, in that X formation mean. And the city of Titnachtitlan, again, separated into four segments. Now, directly below the rock, you have almost looks like a watch or it's like a circle with little circles inside it and the word Tenochtitlan underneath it. Uh, that's a shield it's supposed to represent that this creation of Tenochtitlan was not easy, nor was it peaceful. It was pretty violent. Uh, so I'll get to the violence in a little bit. Now um, you see a lot of people, I think there are 10 in total and most of them, I think nine out of 10 of them have um, they're very abstract almost like little hieroglyphs but they're men with white on and little red top knots on their head and then their names are written in uh, black on the front of their torsos so it identifies them those are supposed to represent the founders of the city now there's one other figure that i'm pointing to with the arrow and his skin is gray uh, he's directly to the left of the eagle. His his skin is gray because he's put ash over it in some sort of ceremonial, um, you know, painting of the body. And he has a blood mark around his ear. And so this is a high priest of the Aztecs, and he has offered his own blood to the gods, which would be a ritual practice. And he's sitting on a, a different kind of a mat than everyone else is sitting on. So it it highlights him as special and unique. Um, now around all the individuals, the people I just talked about with the white and the top knots and the priest, you have a little bit of organic elements. Those are crops. Uh, the Aztecs grew mostly corn, so it also gives you a little bit of a notion that it's an agricultural society and that they grow corn. And then at the bottom, like the bottom quarter of the image, you have the military conquest. You have two Aztec soldiers with the shields again, looks like chocolate chip cookies. And then you have some temples. So in hierarchy of scale showing the Aztec military as more powerful and they are conquering an enemy. So that is the entire kind of imagery that you see in uh, the top and then the lower part of the piece. The only other thing I didn't mention, and I wanted to show you a little bit close up, around the perimeter of the image, you have these glyphs, now glyphs like a, uh, a little symbol, like a hieroglyph, you know, those pictograph symbols that we had in Egyptian art. You have this blue perimeter with these little symbols or glyphs, and each symbol, it represents uh, a 52-year cycle oops, I put cycle twice, of the sun. And they believe you get a new sun at the beginning of that, you know, at the end of the 52 years, you get a new sun or a new cycle of time. 
And the Aztecs would make sacrifices at the beginning of that cycle. They would sacrifice a human life and you know, fire would be involved. It was called the new fire ceremony. And then everybody would get um, an element of that fire that they had done in the ceremony for their homes. So that border around it marks their cycle of time and this cycle of the sun. So that's what's around the border of the entire image that you can see here uh, a little bit more clearly. And the only other thing I think I have, I wanted just to, to talk to you about on with the top image, with those four quadrants, not only is it showing that the city was divided into four quarters, they divided the city into four quarters because they believed that the universe was also divided into four segments along the compass points of north, south, east, west. So the Aztecs were trying to create with Tenochtitlan uh, almost like an earthly replica of what they believed the cosmos or the universe, you know, how that was arranged to the, connect them clearly to the divine. So that's something you could put in uh, context if you'd like. I think that would work there. And the other thing I wanted to show you is, is more of, you know, just kind of informing you and, and letting you see how these ancient stories and art impacts, you know, a culture and their symbology now. And the Mexican flag that you're looking at in the lower right hand corner has the eagle with the cactus growing out of a rock symbolism. So that symbol comes from this ancient story of Tenochtitlan's founding, uh, ultimately then Mexico City's, and the story of the Aztecs. Um, but remember that this piece is different than what we've done so far. We're now talking about a European group of people in an empire with the Spanish coming across the sea and attacking, overpowering, and conquering you know, this new land and taking over the land and the power from the indigenous people, which in this case, it was the Aztecs. And then you have art made during this time to reflect that. And so that's really what is important with the frontispiece of the Codex of Mendoza. We're starting to introduce some colonial uh, art, this you know, colonial Americas where the Americas you know, all the way from South America to North America, how different parts of it were col you know, colonized and controlled by European powers. So that's it from the frontispiece of the Codex of Mendoza.